on your scope um, and that the pilot you know says hey I'm X miles from this vortex or I'm right over a blah blah intersection that's fine too so that's correlation with the fixed on the scope you can also have aircraft turn 30 degrees or more if you're trying to identify a uh, primary target turn 30 degrees right bing 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 you see that target turn 30 degrees or it goes to the right Reason to be sure that it's the airplane. If you want to do it again, make it turn left. It's got to be at least 30 degrees, okay? Can't be like 10 degrees, that's not enough. 30 degrees. Or have them squawk a code. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Have them ident or standby. Standby just means that the target goes away, the secondary target goes away. Um, a squawk gives you three little slashes on the scope. Um, aircraft have to be positively identified before controllers can provide radar services. You have to know where the airplane is before you can do anything with them, right? And then going a step further, if you if the aircraft requests a vector, better make sure you know where they are, better make sure that they're above the MVA, minimum vectoring altitude, and ideally in your sector, right? Not in somebody else's sector. Because if it's in somebody else's sector, you do not have control to do anything. You have to get that control's permission to do something to it. That means climbing, descending, turning. Now, if the guy's VFR, that's one thing, right? If you're trying to, if you're flying around VFR, and um, let's say he's 10 miles in another sector's airspace, and they want to get picked up for flight following, can you legally do that? Yeah, you can, because he's VFR. What's the proper way? Well, you're not in my sector right now, hang on for 10 miles and I'll identify it then. Or give him that sector's frequency, you can do that. But nine times out of 10, if it was 10, 15, 20 miles away, I'd pick the VFR up, I'd start a track, have a data block, and i put that data block in the other sector scope. Yeah. VFR you can't have a deal with, right? You cannot have a separation of VFR aircraft. Um, I didn't really talk about this all that much, but benefits of radar. Uh, and there will be a question on this. Benefits are navigation systems. Your FMS goes out, you ask to ATC, hey, FMS isn't working, can you give me a vector for whatever airport or whatever fix? So that's a benefit of radar because if you're radar identified, you know where you are and you can tell where you're going. Traffic advisories. Uh, there might be traffic out there that's flying around in proximity to you and not talking to ATC, but we see them, we can tell you, you know, hey, look out, you got traffic. And to vector you or get you set up for instrument approaches. That's important. Uh, going back to radar real quick. If you have a data block on your scope, right, you're working a sector and you got like 10 data blocks on your scope, does having a data block constitute radar contact? It does not. It's really cool to have, you know, the call sign there and maybe an altitude and, uh, you know, your ground speed readout. That's really great, but what constitutes radar contact is having an actual target. So the target that is transmitted to the radar, you know, ADSB, whatever, little slash, left leaner, right leaner, whatever the case might be, that's what constitutes radar. A data block does not constitute radar, so don't fall for that question. I need a target, blah, blah, blah. Uh, also, going back to benefits of radar, if a controller is going to tell you to fly heading 320, these put you on a vector. Controllers issue vectors, airplanes fly headings. Now, the controller says fly heading 070, but in essence, they put you on a vector. So controllers issue vectors. Know that. Also, LOAs and FISOPs. Know that LOAs are between facilities, right? Between a TRACON and a center, a TRACON and a tower, uh, and FISOPs are internal. So it's within your area. So SoCal Approach, Burbank area, they have FISOPs within there, but SoCal, Burbank also has a LOA with LA Center or Fax Fax or whatever the facility there is. Okay? Handouts and point outs. Know that both handouts and point outs um, deal with radar identified targets. With a handoff, you're also transferring communication along for identification. With a point out, you're not transferring comms. So, in one word, the difference between handoffs and point outs, communications. But they both identify radar identified targets. Know the box and corner post terminology, not box and goal post. So box and corner post. Uh, rapid parts of sector is not that big of a deal. Uh, know the terms overflights. That's just aircraft flying through. They're not landing. 
You know, somebody flying through Phoenix Approach, going from Phoenix Approach back into Albuquerque Center airspace, that's called an overflight. A satellite airport, smaller airports in Tracon, so Williams Gateway via satellite airport, Falcon Field, Deer Valley, because it's Phoenix Tracon, not the main airport that they deal with. So, several cards. Um, a route control responsibility, I'm not sure it's actually like that on the test, but know the uh, criteria. If you're inside the two miles from approach gate, the max intercept is 20 degrees, two miles or more out, 30 degree max intercept angle. So, know those that. Uh, establish ready contact, yeah, you gotta know that. You gotta establish ready contact, remember when, at least a mile off or 30 degrees, turns or more. Verify the mode C. It is up to the Tracon controller to verify the mode C as well as the first en route controller uh, to verify the mode C. It's gotta be using 300 feet of what the aircraft says. That's why it's important as a pilot, if you're checking in with ATC, hey, Phoenix Approach, this is so and so, we're leaving 10,000, climb to 15,000. Don't just announce, hey, here I am, because the controller, they know they have to verify your mode C. They gotta make sure that you climb to the correct altitude. They'll ask you, uh, verify altitude leaving and assign altitude. So it's important if you, when you do a check-in that you do do that. Uh, yeah, Minimum vectoring altitude. Know that in Tracon, three miles and a thousand feet, that is, if there's a, a block of altitude so it shows 5,000, the highest obstruction is going to be 4,000 within three miles of that. So that's the criteria for MVAs in a Tracon. In the center, five miles, 2,000 feet. You'll see that, but don't be fooled by it. So three miles, 1,000 feet. Um, as a pilot, though, if ATC gives you a clearance to climb and maintain 8,000 and the MEA or MIA is 10,000, you Full right to climb up to the minimum IFR, minimum period altitude. So, bad on the controller. Um, traffic calls. No, I don't think there's anything on the test on that, but uh, only thing you have to know if uh, it's a heavy or a super, ATC is obligated to have to tell you if the aircraft in question in the traffic call is a heavy or a super. Also, Diverging courses, remember that's how they can kind of get airplanes climbing and climbing and diving a little bit before the three miles and a thousand feet have been met. Uh, so diverging courses, make sure that's a, at least a 15 degree angular difference and that they have passed their confliction point. In other words, they're already passed. They're not gonna merge, they're not gonna touch. It's ready, they're not gonna hit as long as you can see them passing and at least 15 degrees angular difference on their headings then you're good to go. Then you can discontinue vertical separation. LOA's physics. So radar identification, going back to radar real quick. Either primary or secondary. And just remember, primary radar identification is just a primary target. So the radar sending out a pulse, it's getting back a hit from something metallic. Secondary radar is where you're getting the actual readout from the transponder, you're getting mode C. Uh, with ADSB, you're getting the call sign, you're getting uh, ground speed and everything, but the primary target, all you're getting is just a primary target hit. Just a little, something's out there flying around. All right. Let me double check to make sure I covered everything since you came here for the optional class meeting. Uh, what types of separation? Did we talk about types of separation? I think we did. Vertical, lateral, longitudinal, visual. Okay, Know that that's the kind of, and it really is a controller, vertical, lateral, longitudinal. Those are the main ones you work with. Visual, yeah, below 18, that's great. You can use that. Um, but those are the main ones, so vertical, lateral, longitudinal. Visual is pretty cool to use. Remember, it's below 18 only. You have to have separation prior to the loss of separation when you're applying visual, and then you have to establish that type of separation again after you've applied visual. So know that, not course convergence. Three miles and a thousand feet. Radar is good. Yes, yes, yes. Know the terms point out and hand off. You gotta know that. Minimum IFR separation. 
Minimum vertical IFR separation for aircraft is how many feet? Thousand. Okay. That's it. Who wants to take it? Come on over. I've got, uh, I don't know. I've got a stack here for those who want to take it right now.